Yes, hello, welcome in to Living in Sports here for the one season challenge with Barcelona. If you miss a last one, go and have a look at it. We were meant to be winning the Super Cup in that, but it didn't really work out like that. Go and have a look <laughs> to see what I'm talking about. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, then please do subscribe to this channel for daily sports games content. Just now, we are on Football Manager one season challenge with Barcelona, but there might be something new coming up in the next couple of weeks. Who knows? Subscribe and you won't miss out. Since the last episode where we played against Real Sociedad, lost 3-1 in the Super Cup semi-final and drew 0-0 against Elche, we then lost to Tenerife, who were in the division below in the Spanish Cup third round. And you might be thinking, oh, but you'll have played a fairly weak team against them. No. No, we didn't. It was basically full strength. It was not ideal. After that, we made a little tactical change, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. But we did win 5-0 against Granada. Five different goal scorers in that one. Ibrahimovic, Pique, Alba, Griezmann, Pjanic. We then beat uh, Huesca 3-0, Villarreal 2-1, Atletico Pamplona 1-0, 2-1 against Betis and 4-0 against Levante. So you can see we've won five league games in a row, which is currently leaving us four points clear at the top of the table over Valencia. There's then a six-point gap to Atletico Madrid and just one point after that to Real Madrid. So we're actually well, 11 points clear of Real Madrid with just 15 games to go in this season. Four points clear at the top ahead of Valencia. But yeah, I mentioned that we made a bit of a tactical change. We've also had some transfers happen as well, because obviously the last time we saw each other, the transfer window had not closed yet, and it has since closed. And there was a few ins and a few outs. I'll quickly talk you through those. The main out to talk about was Clemon Langley here going away to Liverpool for £25.5 million. He wasn't really playing for us. He did all right when he did play, but he said he wasn't really getting a game for us, so we sold him for £25 million. And with that money, I thought, oh, we're going to be able to buy a lot of you know decent players to come in, but I only got 15% of the transfer revenue, so we did not have a, a large bud to play with. I did bring in a, a replacement for Langley. He only cost me £2.5 million up front and another £5 million over three years or something like that. It's Samuel Gigo. Uh, there you go, two and a half up front and then seven and a half over the next three years. He came in from Spartak Moscow. We've been playing very well this season. So he's arrived at the club, played a couple of games for us. Maybe not quite as good as Langley, but seeing as he's cost, you know, like a third of the money, uh, I don't think it's too bad. A deal, to be honest. And another player who he brought in just to offer some cover at the defensive midfield position. I noticed that when Busquets got himself injured or tired, it was Locatelli or De Jong having to drop in not really somebody I'd want to drop in there. So I've brought in Lucas Leiva. I know the former Liverpool man who has been at Lazio for the last few years. Uh, we brought him in for £2.7 million just to act as a kind of backup option in there at defensive midfield. He's not going to be a starter. He's going to be a squad player. He's still fairly solid. Maybe not very good physically, but he'll act as a decent ball winning player or, or playmaker in that kind of holding midfield role. So all those changes have happened, and you can also see in front of you, we've changed the system. This is the system we played in that 5-0 win, and we've won every single game since by using that system, and it's a 5-3-2. I know, we're, we don't have any wingers. We've got quite a few in the squad, and there's nowhere to play them. Uh, say a 5-3-2 formation, midfield all being, uh, sorry, defence all being ball-playing defenders, wing-backs on support, Deep line playmaker, an advanced playmaker, and a central midfielder on automatic, and a deep line and an advanced forward. And it's working pretty well. Between Messi, Ibrahimovic, and Griezmann, they're kind of rotating the three of them who's getting to play up front each time. It's working quite well. Normally, we would have Busquets, De Jong, and Locatelli or Pjanic, but we've had injuries to Pjanic and Busquets, which is why they, they haven't been in that position, unfortunately. So obviously we've been in a very good run of form recently. Six wins on the trot in La Liga. We do play against Inter Milan in our first knockout round. First leg on the Champions League today. And then we also have our second El Clasico of the season. This time at home up against Real Madrid. Two tough games today. And we'll be playing our 5-3-2 in both of them. Because that is the formation we're going to go with. And maybe... Maybe if it's successful for the rest of the season, it'll be the one we go with for the rest of the season. But anyway, let's get into this game up against Inter Milan. And this is a team that we are going to go for. Ter Stegen in goal with Piquet, 
Arojo and Alaba at centre back. Arojo is someone who's been in the team for quite a while. He's been part of the squad. He's played 10 games for us now. And since he started playing in this three the back formation, he's actually scored three goals for us as well. So very solid. He's a, a young Uruguayan centre back. I think I mentioned him right back at the start of the season. Thought he wouldn't be a starter, but he has become a starter. He's in there at centre back. Uh, and uh, and Gigo or Gigo. Uh, our new signing is on the bench at the moment. Initially, I thought Kiko would probably play, but Araujo, Araujo has got the job. So those three centre-back, uh, Roberto and Alba at wing-back. Lucas Leiva playing because Busquets is injured. Locatelli and De Jong either side of him. And Ibrahimovic gets the game up front with Messi today. So we're playing a 5-3-2 formation. Fantastic recent form. We're playing up against Inter Milan today, who are also playing a 5-3-2 formation. So let's see how we match up up against them. The teams have stepped out and we are playing this first leg at home at the Camp Nou. So let's see how we get on. Early on in the game here, ball on the right-hand side with Roberto. He swings it in and Messi gets a header and head, has a headed goal within four minutes. I said this before, Messi's maybe not best known for his headers, but he scored quite a few for us so far. It's been great to have him back after his injury. You can see he's got on the end of a fantastic cross from Roberto there. Takes a touch, just swings that to the back post and Messi rises above the defender. He's probably a good six inches taller than him. And we're up 1-0 inside four minutes. What a start. Corner kick, Brozovic swings it in for Inter and Lukaku heads that just over the bar. Oh, Lukaku, uh, probably better known as a header of the ball than Messi, but he can't quite finish that. Brozovic swings in another corner here and it's Skriniar there who... Headed that one in, but it's cleared away, and Perisic has got the ball now for Inter Milan down this left-hand side. Back to Brozovic. Will he swing this ball back into the box? I know she's the referee is wearing orange, which is an unusual colour for a goalkeeper. It was a great save from Ter Stegen there from the shot from the Inter Milan midfielder. I can't quite remember who it was there. They all swung into the back post from this corner in Bastoni. But yeah, an, an orange orange kit for referees. That's a, a strange colour. Just coming up to half time here and there's one last highlight. De Jong with it now to Roberto in acres of space. Perisic tries to close him down. Swings it into the middle. Finds Alba. Oh, and it's just wide of the goal. There had been a couple of goals like that earlier on this season where one uh, wing back switched it to the other one and they scored a goal, but not to be this time. We've reached half time. We are up 1-0. We're just about holding on. You look at the match stats on the left-hand side. It's been a fairly even game. And we're just holding on to this 1-0 victory. Throw in from the left. Perisic into Brozovic. It's a good chance from De Jong, but Perisic gets it. Lukaku heads it. And Ter Stegen grabs onto the ball. And will we recycle the play, or is it just going to end in nothing? Alaba finds PK and De Jong in some space, and he finds Messi with it. No, he doesn't. Skriniar heads it away, or clears it away, I should say. And Alaba's got it now. Forward to Alba. Going down this left-hand side. It's forward toward Messi. He plays it to De Jong. And now he finds Alba again. He's got two in the middle if he wants to try and find them. He switches it to Sergio Roberto on this right-hand side. He drives into the box. De Jong with it now. Hits it. What a finish from Frankie De Jong. And Danovic can't get his hands to it. And we're up 2-0. Thrashed in at the near post there from De Jong. What a finish from him. Sergio Roberto here. Tries to get past his man. Instead, he cuts it back to De Jong. He takes one touch and then thrashes it. It's poor goalkeeper from Handanovic. It goes right through him. But we'll take that, and we are up 2-0 here, just short of the hour mark, and there's another chance on this right-hand side. Sergio Roberto gets just hacked down by Brozovic. That's got to be a second yellow card. He's got to be sent off here. Indeed, he does. In fact, it's not even a second yellow. It's just a straight red he was offered there, and it means that we surely have got this game in the bag with 20 minutes to go. We might make some changes, though, to try and get a few more goals. Bring on Pjanic, and we'll take off Ibrahimovic for Griezmann as well. I'm looking at the back, take off PK and bring on Gigo for him. With 20 minutes to go, maybe go slightly more attacking, demand some more, and see if we can get a couple of goals to put this tie beyond doubt. A couple of minutes to go in the game, and Hakimi's throw it was intercepted by Messi there, and Messi into the box, he gets hacked down by De Vrij. Surely that is a penalty kick. It's got to be, you would have thought. The, the orange-clad referee goes to the monitor at the side. He has a look at it. He'll walk back onto the pitch, and he'll tell us what. Let's find out. It is a penalty, and who's going to take it? Probably it's going to be Messi, you would have thought. Indeed it is. Can he tuck this away to make it three? Messi steps up and thrashes that into the bottom corner. We're up 3-0 here, thanks to that penalty from Lionel Messi. 
And we are dominating this tie. The second leg should be comfortable for us away in Milan. But I tell you what, what a dominant victory there. Two goals for Messi and one for De Jong. We were already ahead before the red card, but the red, hard, red card certainly helped. But a, a nice victory there. And this formation proving to be very, very successful. Well, that was a very successful performance in the first game of this episode. We've got the second one up against Real Madrid in just a moment. and see if we can keep this fantastic run of form going. Look at that. We've only conceded two goals in our last seven games since we've moved to this formation. And we've scored, what, 10, 20 goals in seven games? That's not bad. Averaging about three a game. Let's see if we can score a lot of goals against Real Madrid. That'd be very nice. Remember, we drew with them one all the last time out. Let's see if we can beat them in the second El Clasico of the season. Right, so here we are ready for the second El Clasico of the season. And we are obviously continuing on with our five at the back formation. A couple of changes to talk about. Ter Stegen still in goal. PK Alaba and Narajo at centre back. Roberto and Alba at wing back. Busquets comes back into the midfield alongside Pjanic and De Jong. And Ibrahimovic will lead the line alongside Messi as well. Let's get into this one. A nice win against Real Madrid would really show that we're properly, properly title contenders. I know we're currently top of the table, but it would really show that we can beat anybody in this division and hopefully give us a little bit of a buffer ahead of them. We're already a few points ahead of them. Nine points ahead at the moment. Can we, In fact, 11 points, not nine. 11 points ahead at the moment. Can we make it 14? That would be very impressive indeed. So here we are, ready for this game against Real Madrid. You can see that the Real Madrid formation is a 4-1-4-1 formation. So our three centre-backs just have Karim Benzema to deal with. Let's see how they get on with that. Been a very boring game so far. This is the first highlight of the day. And Mendy's got the ball here at left-back for Real Madrid. He plays it long. But there's absolutely nobody there. So Strategan collects it. Passes it about to our centre backs. All of them have had a touch of it now. And Alaba plays it forward. And Messi's in behind. Can he get there before Courtois? He could, but he just dinked it over Courtois. But Varane got in there to defend. And that was nearly a goal for us. Another highlight now. The ball played long by Courtois, but to absolutely nobody. And Sergio Roberto's got it on the right-hand side for us now. Down to the byline. Swings it in. It's headed about. Oh, it's bounced about all over the place like a ping-pong ball. But... It's cleared away just about, and we've got five minutes left till half time, and it's still nil nil. A couple of good chances there, though. And half time's come and gone, it's still nil now. Here's a chance in the second half. Messi with a free kick from deep inside, uh, or, or all the way to the halfway line, not deep inside anybody's half at all. Alaba swings that into Pianic, though, and Pianic has gone the end of it, and that is perhaps some of the weirdest positioning for players. I've ever seen. So our left centre back, it was obviously still up from the free kick. He's playing out in the, the wide right position. He gets a hold of the ball here. And Pjanic is one of the furthest forward players for us. In fact, he's the only one in the box against four defenders. And he gets on the end of the cross and Pjanic scores. And we're up 1-0. Somehow. 20 minutes to go in this game. And we are still winning 1-0. There's not been a highlight since the goal. I'm just... Going to see if anything happens at all. I don't really want to make any substitutions. I feel as if the boys are playing fairly well in there. The only thing I would consider doing is maybe freshen up some of the midfield, but we'll see if we have to. Natural with it now. Plays it long as Courtois and Jordi Alba intercepts it. And Busquets and Pjanic and De Jong and Messi. And can he get a second? Oh, it's a good save from Courtois. Five minutes to go in this game. And it's still 1-0 to us. We do have a corner kick that Pjanic will swing in. Can we get on the end of it toward Messi? But Courtois collects that. And it's just about going to be a 1-0 victory, I think, for us. There's three minutes added time, but I don't think anything's going to happen at the end of this game. And just as I say that, there is a one late highlight. 30 seconds to go. Casemiro has it forward to Mendy. Mendy with the ball back to Nacho, and it's out to the left for Marcello. And Marcello drives forward. Well, he hit this. He does. It's wide of the goal, though. And that's surely a victory confirmed for us here in this El Clasico. A very heated game. Seven yellow cards in it. But we're going to just about hold on for the win. PK clears that ball away. He does indeed. And we've won the second El Clasico of the season. One. Now, I'm not sure that it will go down as a classic. As I say, look at the average ratings. It's all the defenders who are doing all the work there. You see no one worse at the centre-back department than a 7.3. But 
but a good win nonetheless. And that puts us even further ahead at the top of the table. And it puts us miles ahead of Real Madrid as well. Let's look at the table there. We are four points ahead of Valencia as it was beforehand. Valencia also won today. Atletico haven't played yet, but even if they do win, they'll be 10 points behind us. And we're 14 points ahead of Real Madrid. So at this stage, it looks like it's us and Valencia for the La Liga title. So we'll come back in a couple of games' time. We play against Real Sociedad, see if we can get some revenge after we lost to them in the Super Cup semi-final. And we have our second leg of our Champions League first knockout round up against Inter Milan. Remember, we take a 3-0 lead away to the San Siro. So hopefully, hopefully, we do not throw that away. So the next game will be Sociedad and Inter Milan. If you have enjoyed this episode, two good wins in it, then please do leave a like on the video. Really does help us out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until the next one, we're we'll going to play Sociedad and Inter Milan. We'll see you then.